What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode of What It Is. Um, hopefully, you guys have been having a good week. Um, I've been cool for the most part. All I've been, to be honest, a bitch been tired. i just been really, really, really tired for the past few days because I've been working nonstop, okay? And a bitch need a break. I really do need a break. I don't know how this schedule got to the place that it is. And now that my uh, co-worker, or I should say former co-worker, is no longer here. Girl, I put that video up about the fact that my co-worker got fired. Or I should say terminated, okay? Um, and then my other co-worker who wasn't here the other day to find out about it. When we was telling him about it, he was like, oh my God. She was still getting paper checks. And we get paid on Friday. And it was like, is she going to come up in here? Because, bitch, let me tell you something. That lady, that lady would not come to work on time most of the time. She would have an excuse here, my car this, my car that. I need to find a parking space or whatever. But, bitch, if she wasn't scheduled to work and the checks came in on the day that she wasn't scheduled to work, she would be up here before we even opened up to get the goddamn check. I said, oh, we'll come on time for money. We'll come on time for money, bitch. But um, we're going to have to see how that is. Like, is HR going to keep her check or... Is um that they, they gonna send it out to us or whatever? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully HR because my boss already told us that the lady ain't invite. Uh, she can't come back up into the. Uh, I was about to say come back into the house. She can't come back into the building. You know, after you threaten to sue a bitch for what? For what? Because of your stuff, girl. I wouldn't let that hoe up in here either. Anyway, moving on from that, I hope everybody else is doing well. It's a beautiful day out for once because it's been raining all fucking week. Anyway, let's just get up into this video. Um, first of all, we have to start off with some sad news. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with the Judd's family. You know, um, Naomi Judd, Wyona Judd, Ashley Judd, the actress. You know, uh, Wyona, you know, her and her mother, Naomi, they was in a group called the Judd's Country Singers. And um, unfortunately, she passed away, Naomi, the mother. You know, uh, Ashley Judd. She had put out a statement and basically said that they lost a mom to uh, mental illness. At one point, when Naomi and uh, Winona were together as the judge or whatever, they had to stop the, the group because Naomi got diagnosed with hepatitis. I said, well, shit, bitch. <laughs> That's crazy. Like, you have to go back. And I don't know if it was a docu-series that I looked at or if it was a, a, a documentary or something like that, like on TV or whatever. Um, that was talking about the storied history between all three of them. Like, it's crazy, and it was really, really good. Um, you know, a lot of trauma, but, you know, love and everything that was there. Uh, they scored 14 number one songs in their career over the past three decades. Um, and they was about to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame on Sunday, and she died that Saturday. That's crazy. That's crazy, but... Condolences goes out to her and the family. Um, Naomi was only 76 years old. That's, I would say that's kind of young given, and when we say young, I mean like, in my opinion, I want people, I don't want people to pass away, but I will hope people live until they're like almost 90 or over 90 or whatever but you know 76 that's still you still got a little oomph in you just a little bit but of course like they said she was dealing with some health problems so unfortunately she passed away um condolences to them amanda Bynes, baby <laughs> amanda Bynes gonna fuck around and get herself back on a uh, conservatorship all right like mama just got off Nobody contested it. Everybody was like, she was on for a few years. It's time for her to get off. And if you go back and you go look at her history, when Amanda Bynes started wilding the fuck out, you know, putting out songs about Drake, wanting to fuck this person, fuck her puss, all that shit, and, and, and the, the, the drugs or whatever it was that she was on and the different wigs and the different antics that was happening out of nowhere. <sighs> That's how we knew, you know, being... Uh, being on 5150 holes and stuff like that. It, it, it was just crazy. It was crazy. It was very much mirroring, mirroring. Girl, get your words together. I told you I'm tired. Britney Spears situation, okay? But I think hers was a little bit worse because, you know, Britney, I don't feel like, 
I feel like it could have been some underlying and stuff that was going on with Britney, but it came out not as bad as Amanda. Amanda shit, like, it's kind of been there. Like, both of them was there, but they came out in different ways, in, in public ways, and worse, you know? Um, so that's why I say they mirror each other. Uh, listen, I don't know what it is about these, what is it, child stars and entertainers. See, I just don't understand why people want to be up in entertainment, especially why would you want to want your child to be in entertainment so bad, okay? Because all this stuff that's been going on, and you, we see how these child stars have, you know, turned out. It's very few and far in between child stars who come out and they're normal and they know how to navigate the adult life you know what i'm saying and all the stuff that they've been through being child stars because we didn't heard some stories oh my goodness you gotta go back you gotta go back to when all this shit really happened and how fucked up the industry is especially to children okay like the the the, the abuse that goes on the sexual molestations and stuff that goes on and all that shit it's just disgusting you know and i just wouldn't want to put my child through that you know and you got these two cases with Brittany and, and, and amanda they've been in business since they was kids you know what i'm saying so ain't no telling what been down and what was going on that made them just lash out or or finally just snap or whatever but mama just got off a of conservatorship the last time before we heard about the conservatorship trying to get off um she was up here with her boyfriend or i should say her fiance paul and the last thing that we heard about that was that the family was not here for him family was not here for him at all um amanda had her issues and kind of found out he had his drug issues and she put out there saying that that motherfucker is back on the crack okay she was like listen he did have a clean test but at one point probably a couple of weeks before that man was on some cocaine okay and um he relapsed and i'm like get yourself out that situation like I, I i understand that you love a person and like i said i don't feel like she's in her right mind right now um you can love a person, but if you are going through something and you trying to recover from it, you can't have a spouse or your support system being somebody that's basically doing what you're trying not to do. That's not a support system. That's a, I ain't gonna call it an enabler, but it could be an enabler. Girl, don't, I got coffee spilled on my shirt this morning. <sighs> Telling you it's been a rough day. <laughs> it's been a rough day. And I got on the light. It's light at the top. It's dark at the bottom. And I was like, damn, if only the shit was reversed so you couldn't really see it. Like, you... anyway, moving on. Moving on. I just hope Amanda get herself together. I don't want um, anything bad to happen to her. I want her to get away from all this shit. But, um, yeah, she's a grown-ass woman and she off conservatorship. So what can she do now? Or what can they do now? But moving on from that, we have a little story Oh, I didn't mean to say that, and I just realized that. Little in the fact that we don't really know much about it. Miss Juicy, word came out like over the weekend or whatever that Miss Juicy was on. Um, Miss Juicy, baby. Can somebody put it down in the comments? What happened between Miss Juicy and um Ricky Smiley? Because remember, she was on the Ricky Smiley show, a uh, radio show. She was on his TV show, uh, you know, the one that had Ray J on there. Uh, I don't know if she made a guest appearance on his reality show, but it was just like all of a sudden she wasn't on the radio show anymore. And I just want to know what happened to that. I've always been wondering that. I know it's been a few years now, but I never really looked into it. But anyway, um, I did not know she was 50 years old, but she's 50 years old. Um, she was admitted to the hospital. She's currently in ICU in stable condition. But when the news first came out, there was, it was very vague. It just said that, you know, she was in a coma, pray for her. Um, they didn't know if she had possibly a heart attack or a stroke. Uh, right now, I don't know any real update because I have did these, this part of the notes earlier this week, but the last that I heard was that she's still recovering and stabilizing in ICU. Um, I just pray everything is okay. Because if y'all looked at Little Women, ATL, oh my God, when Minnie, Minnie passed away, and you know Juicy and Minnie used to go at it. Them motherfuckers was frenemies. 
to the core, okay? Because on one season, they'll be cool. The next season, they won't. And then the next season, they'll be cool. And then in the middle of that season, they won't. And then towards the end, to by the reunion, they'll be okay. It, it was a topsy-turvy, up-and-down type of relationship. Um, and to hear that she passed away, the way that she passed away, it was messed up. And it just put a lot of things in perspective. And given that they're little people as well, uh, I just all the shit that they had to go through i really just hope that um she comes out here better and she's okay um moving on from that girl <sighs> y'all should already know what i'm about to say because who finna get this type of reaction bitch another fucking week we are talking about jonathan kirk aka the baby okay um <laughs> I just don't understand. I don't understand. It's like all of his past shit and current shit is just coming back at his ass. I don't know if it's karma. I don't know what it is. So I'm not going to say that. But baby, what is going on with Mr. Jonathan? Okay. My ex is just doing a lot. All right. Um, last week, it was the whole thing about the shooting in the Walmart in 2018. Now this week is coming out about... Um, he facing criminal charges from this guy property that he was using to do a video shoot that the guy did not know that he was using it for a video shoot and he was only supposed to have a certain amount of people up in there probably like 12 people or whatever that was supposed to stay there at the man's um mansion or whatever come to find out it was 40 plus people there and the man came there and he was pissed off and it wasn't really the baby that was doing anything it was his security and everybody else that basically fucked that man up and i guess they did it underneath his orders because the baby didn't stop it but you know because of that he want to press charges and mind you this shit happened in 2020 <laughs> december 2020 why y'all keep doing this somebody whoop my ass bitch i'm pressing listen depending on who it is like if it's a stranger you know if we swearing up and it's warranted or whatever, we got past beef and all that shit, we get into a fight or whatever, I'm going to let that shit rock. If I lose, I lose. I'm going to take the L. If I win, I win. I'm going to take that win. And I'm going to move on with my day. I'm not going to sue nobody. I'm not going to do nothing like that. But, bitch, if it's a fucking stranger, it's a fucking stranger, it's a, it's a person or whatever they got some issue trying to be racist or whatever you know bitch i'm gonna fuck your ass up and then i'm gonna call the cops okay and i'm gonna, I'm gonna press charges that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna press charges and i'm gonna make sure it's being filmed okay so that y'all can know that bitch i didn't start this shit they antagonized me and then you know people was coming at the baby they was coming at him saying damn nigga you can't keep your ass out of any type of trouble um he posted another video because tmz posted part of it and you know how um, people, when Black Lives Matter stuff come out or whatever, and they talking about somebody getting shot or whatever, I don't know why I'm smiling at that because that's not right. Um, so don't take that as. But you know how they always be like, when we see police brutality in videos or whatever, and they be like, well, what's the context? We don't know the context. Bitch, we didn't know the context in this. And the baby said, listen, we're going to get the full context. The reason why all this shit went down. Yeah, we violated what he said. But that nigga said some racial shit to us. And he posted the clip and everything. And I said, well, fuck it. <laughs> Once you throw race up in that bitch, it's all out the window. Okay, so hey. It is what it is. But sometimes we got to learn how to just, and I know we got that saying that says, I am not my ancestors. I will fuck your ass up or whatever. But sometimes we have to pick and choose when the right battle is. Okay, when is the right battle in that war to do something, you know? Because certain people are just so quick to want to charge a nigga with something. All right, we just can't go around just putting our hands on everybody all the time, regardless. Even though in a perfect world, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to do that anyway. But, you know, y'all get what I'm saying. Um, keep Jonathan in the house. I need Jonathan to stay in the house, uh, play with his kids. And that's what I need him to do, okay? Just just stay in the house for a little bit. Because it's just too entirely too much just coming up about him. Uh, and it's just it's just getting ridiculous at this point. Meanwhile, um, you want to know who else had uh, Joe Budden. I want him to stop. <laughs> 
I just don't understand. Like, and I can't, I can't really say that. I don't know how I feel about past entertainers or whatever being on podcasts and speaking on their peers. Because you do have people who like are on reality shows and they have YouTube channels and they review some of the shows or whatever. And these technically are your peers that you're talking about. Um, you have former artists, current artists who have podcasts and they're talking about their peers in the industry. Whether or not you're cool or not, whether or not you're friends or associate, they're still your peers because you're still in that same field. You know, and I feel some type of way about people who talk about people in that same field. Um, especially when they have not done anything to you, but I know it's like, well, they can get an opinion. I get that, but it kind of feels a little bit different because us YouTubers, we, we get on here and we talk shit about everybody, okay? But some of us, we have that code where we're not going to talk about whatever issues going on with another YouTuber, okay? And I'm one of those people, you know? As far as I've gotten is talking about the Tasha K situation, and that's only because it involved another celebrity, you know, an actual celebrity. So that's, that's the only reason why I mention it, but I wasn't bragging on her. I wasn't judging like that. I was just saying, let this be a precaution, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, and I'm not using people's names for views or whatever y'all notice i don't even put what topic it is that i'm talking about throughout the episode or throughout the video in my um what it is titles you know what i'm saying so it's nothing like that i just i just i just feel differently i just feel differently about people talking about people in their field you know and joe button he just honestly i don't know how i feel about him like at one point i did not really like him when Pump It Up came out, I was like, okay, cool. But then when I found out some more shit about him and the stuff that he's done in his past, it was just like, uh. Then when he got on Love and Hip Hop, I was like, uh. But then I was like, okay. But then after that, he got his podcast. He kind of started getting a little bit of respect. And then I was like, uh, he not so bad, but he's still kind of bad, but not so bad. But then he'd go and say some stupid shit like this. You know what I'm saying? The whole Megan situation, I'm so tired of talking about it, but unfortunately, it's news. Um, he basically talked about the interview that she did with Gail King. And I agree, like, some people saying that the interview shouldn't have been done, like she showed her cards or whatever, her showed her hands and all that shit. Um, honestly, I feel as though she's the only one that should be able to talk about it at this point because it happened to her, you know, and given that, you know, everybody else has been saying shit about it, she should be able to say about it, but say something about it. Um, why is it that she would have to have a gag order on her given that the situation happened to her and she has not been antagonizing the situation or whatever the way that Tori has. But, you know, if we want to be fair, maybe the judge should have said that both of them shouldn't talk about it, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, and I think that's probably some of the shit that Joe was saying. But what got me is this part. He basically got pissed off at the fact that she did the Gail King interview and she went to Gail and not to a hip hop outlet. Here's the thing with that. I know it's a hip hop situation because you got Tori and you got Megan. And I would felt some type of way. I could see him feeling this type of way if she went to somebody like a uh, who's a white interviewer if she went to an Anderson Cooper or uh, Andy Cohen or somebody like that and talked about the situation she went to a black woman from one black woman to another black woman she went to a black woman okay and it's like these hip-hop outlets so far some of them first of all some of them are not just black owned they're not just they're the white folks behind the scenes um that's neither here nor that well that actually is a point but some of these hip hop shits are so fucking biased. And most of these blogs or whatever, they're so fucking biased. They're not gonna just let shit go, like let let without picking sides or whatever, or twist the words or whatever. They'll put the interview up and then write up some shit that'll be like throwing doubt and everything instead of just letting the person get their shit out. So it's understandable why she went to Gail King. But then basically trying to say or imply that her getting up there talking and being able to say what she needs to say, um, and Tori Knight is basically victim bullying. 
like she's bullying she's the victim bullying the the the, the um the alleged perpetrator of the crime or whatever and i'm just like that don't make fucking sense okay that don't make some that sense he said he called it disgusting said that um she could easily talk about the shooting and tori had to face consequences for speaking up tori faced consequences because he was doing too fucking much okay and y'all want to say that Megan's story keeps changing. Tory shit keeps changing as well. Y'all need to go back and y'all need to just look at the shit, okay? You know, and again, what solidified it for me was the fact that the text message came out saying that Kelsey told her security that, you know, Tory shot the girl, allegedly, all right? And then you have Jonathan Wright, her old uh, hairdresser, who is still friends with her, said that, yeah, that dude tried to offer him money too to shut the fuck up. You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> first of all, why y'all just not saying this shit now? But okay, we needed to hear this earlier, but you know, it is what it is. But um, he said there's a such thing as victim bullying. He later brought up Evelyn and Chad, who was arrested, uh, you know, for that whole situation that happened between Evelyn and Chad Oko Cinco during their marriage and their domestic dispute that they had, um, that caused her to divorce him. And he said, for years, anytime his name would come up, she popped up. I had nothing to do with her. Wait a minute. I had nothing to do with her, but she popped up and said, hey, he did this. So you're talking about the Evelyn situation. Well, you're talking about Megan's situation, right? And the fact that she was harmed. So let's put that to the side. Because he basically said, fuck all that from what I'm, I'm reading and what I'm seeing. Fuck all of that. Fuck the fact that she was harmed, okay? She's the victim in this. You know, let's have sympathy for Tori because, oh, it's a bad thing that he can't speak up or whatever, you know, because y'all got this boys club going on or whatever. We see what, 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 what you lie at. And then to further try to prove your case, you bring up Chad and Evelyn's situation. And I was like, why do you need to bring that up? Why do you need to bring that up, okay? And I was... Here for Evelyn clapping back because she was like, bitch, you could have used yourself as a fucking example, okay? And it just got the reaction that he did not expect or probably did not think he would get because you literally are an abuser yourself protecting another abuser. And I'm not even talking about this particular situation that happened between Megan and Tori. Y'all got to go back and look at Tori's history. He has allegations of abuse against black women against him all this time you know what i'm saying he it's not a one-time thing it's not a two-time thing this part has escalated but he has you know other allegations that's where i'm coming from and then for joe to come out here and say this shit almost as if you're sympathizing with him or whatever it's like sir you're an abuser too and hit to here we had to say something as as well you know and it's just like sometimes you should just shut up Certain things you can give your opinion on and then just let it be that. But then we have to think about our opinions and make sure it makes sense and it doesn't implicate ourselves and that we can't have somebody come back and say, well, bitch, this you, okay? Because you did the same thing and you were this and you were that, all right? It's okay to give your opinion, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, just make sure it ain't going to fall back on your ass in a negative ass way, you know? I just feel like he should have just hushed on that, hushed on that, you know? But, um... I know some of y'all probably going to feel different, but hey, it is what it is. That's just how I feel. Moving on from that, um, baby, I want to feel bad for ASAP Rocky. Only, you know, the only reason why I realized the only reason why I'm kind of taking it light on him is because he with Rihanna and I like Rihanna. Girl, I don't give a fuck about an ASAP Rocky, okay? I don't know none of his music. I only known about the negative things that he said about black women or whatever. Um, and I'm talking about dark-skinned women. Mind you, he's a dark-skinned guy himself. <laughs> it just, it kills me when dark-skinned men have negative things to say about dark-skinned women. Bitch, y'all the same fucking complexion. So do you hate yourself? I'm confused. I'm conf Obviously, obviously. You just don't want to say that, you know? But basically, the LAPD went up in his house and they got a whole bunch of guns out there, bitch. Mind you, they said they had video evidence of him um, actually doing that shooting. I said, what the fuck? Girl, I said, I pr pr 
pray that none of them damn guns in that house. I said, he cannot be that dumb. If he did this shit, it cannot be the same gun up in the house. You need to get rid of that shit, okay? And thank God they did not find it. I was like, he would have been really, really dumb. I and mean, if he would have found that gun up in the house, I said, lock his ass up. Because he deserves to be locked up for doing something so stupid. Like, come on, you got to get rid of the evidence, okay? Everybody fucking knows that, bitch. How many movies and TV shows we've seen? Somebody that pop, 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 and they threw the gun away. Like, come on, you got to get rid of it. But thank God. Thank God. I said, listen, Rihanna... Baby, <sighs> your kid might not see daddy for year two or three of his or her life. I don't know. Because shit's not looking good for ASAP at this point. I don't know. Mm -mm. And now that they said they got video evidence footage of the goddamn crime being happened, that's all they fucking need. Moving on from that, let's get into this whole situation with Ray J and Kim Kardashian. Let me preface this by, I don't know if it's because I've already watched some of the Kardashian show. Like, I've watched the season. I've put this out here before. I've watched the show since the inception. Towards, like, before it ended, I would say, like, five seasons, five to six seasons before it ended, I stopped watching. I came back the last season because it was ended on E. You know what I'm saying? And what really drew me back in, because I had to watch the episode when Courtney and um, Kim got into that fight. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what y'all say. That was some good TV right there. I said that was probably one of the best parts of the Keeping Up With The Kardashians, because they was really fighting. I had to rewind that shit. They was really fucking fighting. Like, they was like, and when she hit Kim and her makeup was on that white wall, I said, damn, Courtney. But Kim was fucking her ass up, too. So let's not do that. You know, they was fucking each other up. You know, that's what really made Courtney hit her the, as hard as she did because Kim hit her hard as fuck, too. But um, anyway, so Hulu got the new Kardashians. And to me, it just feels like it's not so much centered these past few episodes that since it's been on for like three episodes or whatever, it's heavily centered on Kim. So I'm like, is it keeping up with the, is it called the Kardashians or is it called Kim? Because that's mostly who we've been seeing, you know? And it's all surrounded the fact about she's going to do uh, uh, SNL and this whole sex tape debacle shit comes out. You know, WAC 100 came out, which is Ray J, ex-manager, talking about something that was another sex tape or whatever. And, you know, she's all up in her feelings. Oh, my God, you know, they, the, the, the little boy saw it on Roblox and good thing he didn't know what that meant. He just saw her, her crying face, okay? And it was an advertisement for the alleged part two or whatever of the sex tape. So... She had to do what she had to do. Now, I would always say, Wack 100 is a bitch, okay? Every time I see or hear something about him, he's always arguing or getting into somebody else's business and mostly talking about women or whatever. And he's just, he's just, he's very much what his name is, whack as fuck, okay? He's like an industry bully. And I just don't understand what exactly he doing, what exactly do he manage, okay? And how does he become the person that he is? Like, this motherfucker is cool with, Takashi 69 a rat. Oh, okay. But um basically on the recent episode and I watched this and I hate the fact that I watch it. Girl, y'all, I really hate the fact that I'm contributing to this shit because I'm watching it and I don't know if I'm hate watching it or I'm watching it just because I feel like I have to because I gotta continue to see what's going on. I don't know what it is. Like I they're missing out or something. I don't know. But she was getting ready for SNL. And then she told her mom to come up into the room or whatever. And they was like, should we bring cameras? And she was like, yeah, you can bring cameras. She was like, oh, my God. Because Kanye was there. Like, he flew all the way out here. And look at what he got me. Like, this whole situation was going on. Mind you, it was nothing to cry about. All of a sudden, she got real emotional. Pulled out a suitcase opened it up, and I mean, it was a big-ass suitcase to pull out a little disc, a little, like, DVD disc or whatever, container. And she was like, he went to Ray J, and they met in the airport, and they exchanged all of the sex tapes and stuff for me. And I'm sitting here like this. 
you want to be on somebody's TV screen other than uh, you want to be on somebody's movie screen. Like, mama was going for an Emmy. I mean, the tears, the fake shit, it was just so unbelievably fake. I said, y'all rehearse this. Y'all rehearse this and you can't tell me no different, right? So, all of a sudden, Ray J came out and said, you know what? The lies got to stop. That shit is a fucking lie. At the beginning, when that first came out, we basically thought that he was saying that, um, you know, he didn't give him the sex tape, whatever, this shit is a lie and all this shit. But, you know, he basically said he can't keep, he clarified it. That did happen, but he's saying the way that they're trying to spin this narrative around this whole sex tape situation after all these years, he's just sick of the way that they're trying to spin it. You know, like as if it really was leaked. It wasn't leaked. He said he didn't leak anything. Um, it was a partnership or um, a contract that happened between all parties involved, Kim, him, and Chris. They signed a thing. Let me say what it say. Um... He said, when I put on the comments that all of this is a lie, I didn't mean Kanye coming to meet me uh, with, meet with me about the second sex tape. I mean, all of this a lie. From the beginning of us putting the sex tape out, this has been the biggest lie in the industry in the history of entertainment. Um, he dropped the bombshell details about the infamous tape, including the release with Vivid, and said that it was a consensual partnership between him, Kim, and Chris. This is one of those situations where um, I'm pretty sure we probably already knew. And then if some people didn't know, it just confirmed it that this was already going to happen. Like somebody probably got a hold of it. And instead of it being like, oh, don't put it out there. Let's just go ahead and sign an agreement to go ahead and put it out there and make money off of it. You know what I'm saying? And I guess what he's trying to say is. Yeah, this has affected your life as well, but it has affected mine too. But you're trying to make it seem as if it's just you that's been affected by this whole thing. And honestly, I want her to stop fucking crying about it because this whole shit then gave her the biggest career bump ever. Okay? If it wasn't for this shit, bitch, we wouldn't give a fuck about who uh, Kim Kardashian is and this whole empire that they got. So, like, quit fucking crying about that shit and let that shit go. Okay? Like, y'all all got kids. Y'all all got so-called careers or whatever because i don't know what ray j doing now <laughs> but i can't even do that i'm not even gonna do that to ray j because ray j is an entrepreneur as well like fuck that music shit we don't give a fuck but he's an entrepreneur and you know he's been out here making a way for himself like somehow some way he gonna make his money so i just want i just want her to stop that i, I want we already know that that whole family be manipulating all these type of situations and speaking to the family Unfortunately, for Black China, listen, the Kardashians won again. Okay? Black China got this goddamn defamation um, uh, lawsuit out there about the counseling of um, Robin China show. And even though it was things that was being put out there saying that at one point they did have it greenlit or in the works to do a part two, a season two, but it just never fully got greenlit or whatever. They st and, and Kim has been found not liable or responsible for anything, so she was out of the lawsuit. They dropped her from the suit. But then, baby, it came out literally, I think, at the Met Gala, um, <laughs> on the day of the Met Gala. They were supposed to be down in air court. They didn't show up. Black China showed up. And the judge ruled basically to dismiss the case and that they ain't had nothing to do with it. Like, the verdict it was basically like they not guilty of nothing. Um, to be honest, I already told y'all guys this, that the Kardashians is a fucking huge machine. I'm not saying that they paid their way to um get this verdict or whatever. I'm not saying they use their they use their influence i don't know but at the end of the day there was no way china was gonna win this especially when they started getting on the stand and they digging up all her past or whatever and some people was like i don't understand what they had to do that has every much to do with it when you do these court cases or whatever this is what lawyers do they go through your whole bitch we are here about this thing why do we care about what happened when i was six years old <laughs> Okay, girl, we are here for something that happened in 2015. Why are we going back to 1993? <laughs> oh, I just said, that's what happens when you're in court. And so, girl, it is what it is. And then here come Tokyo Tony. Her mama put out a GoFundMe talking about some, 
it ain't done. We're going to appeal, which I'm pretty sure they're going to appeal. But honestly, I just feel like they just need to give it up because it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's not hurting the Kardashians. It's hurting Black China, and mostly financially. You got your mama putting up a goddamn GoFundMe talking about some gift four thousand four hundred thousand dollars to do this appeal. Bitch, you better go sell your fucking house for that shit. Okay, ain't nobody got time for that. Um, what else, girl? Now she finna do a celebrity boxing match or whatever. I mean, money, legal fees gotta be paid. So hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to make that money. So hey. I already saw this shit coming. I'm not surprised by it. And especially after they started divulging all her shit, bitch, I just knew it was over. And then, like I said, the machine that's the Kardashian child, they weren't finna let her breathe. Moving on from that, uh, congratulations to Chloe Bailey. She's about to be in a new movie um, called Praise This. It's a musical film competition comedy revolving around the world of youth choirs and it is produced by will packer honestly it sounds a little bit like fighting temptations that's what it gives me that's what it gives me like a youth choir version of fighting temptations or probably joyful noise with kiki palmer and queen latifah but hey here's what it is i like the fact that these girls are still out here working in their most high faceted so do what you got to do highly in the studio making some music and that little snippet that we heard oh it was it was beautiful it was beautiful i like the fact that they both got their own individual styles you know when they're going their solo way they got their their ways together when they're chloe and Hallie the group but then when they're doing their solo things their sounds are totally different so i i, I like both of that um Y'all heard about the actress Olivia Wilde being served basically custody papers or whatever <laughs> while she was at, um, what is it called? CinemaCon trying to introduce her new movie by her ex, uh, what's his name? Jacob or what's his name? Sadukis. Jason Sadukis. I said, bitch, you want to know what it reminded me of? People were trying to say, oh, that's fucked up. He was wrong for that. But when you realize that you, what people don't realize is when you get served with papers, it's not up to the person who, um, girl, my bra strap showing. Anyway, I told y'all, today is just a ragged ass day. Who cares? It is not up to the person to determine where they at and be like, okay, well, she's going to be at this place. So I want you to embarrass her and do this. No, the process service be doing that shit on their own, okay? They'll find your ass and they don't give a fuck. And I think that shit is shady as fuck on the goddamn um, process server uh, part. Y'all remember when Sierra was up there prior dancing and they put them papers on that damn... After Rihanna said what she said, good luck with finding that stage that you um, think that you're going to perform on... That probably was the second most embarrassing thing I felt like in Sierra's career. Outside of, I would say, Future. But she got a baby from that, a cute little boy, so I ain't gonna say that. But bitch, they served them papers to her while she was in mid one two step. <laughs> At Pride, and you know how the gays are. Okay, bitch, we got some. You know what I'm saying? I said, bitch, that was fucked up. But, hey, um,. <clears throat> Yep. Hold on a Anyway, he thought he was going to come up in here and um, clean up. That was the janitor. At least he knocked and then just opened up the door. So I appreciate that. I ain't going ain't gonna to rag this time. Bitch, let me tell y'all something. Last week, because he, he be leaving out early before we leave. Like, he leave out probably like an hour before we go. And um, <laughs> we thought he left. And we was like, okay, so... Because I did see him leave out. And me and another coworker, we saw him go to the front and leave out. We did not know that he did not leave out, leave out. Because we was asking, you know, making sure when we was leaving, girl, uh, is everybody gone? Is everybody gone? 
is the janitor gone? Like, where is he? Girl, we was like, he already gone, I guess, because that's what he normally do. Bitch, I just so happened once again, because it's happened with the other janitor before. I just so happened to still be out there waiting for my ride, and all of a sudden, the alarm goes off on the building. <laughs> Why? Because he was still back there. He was coming through. And mind you, he had his headphones on. And they was up so goddamn loud. So, of course, he didn't hear us when we were saying that we was leaving. But then again, you know what time we closed. I said, bitch, you better be glad that somebody was here to open up the door for you. But um, anyway, moving on from that, Madonna and her little boy toy, they didn't broke up. Madonna liked, what, 60-something or almost that? No, she's 60-something. Him, he was 26. I guess his little contract with her was over. And he said, I fulfilled my duties and it's time for me to bounce. And that's exactly what he did. You know, um, that's probably why she out here doing what she doing. Honestly, I want to say, I don't know. Like, sometimes we be like, motherfuckers too old to be doing shit like that. But honestly, Madonna is being very much Madonna. Okay, like, did we really think that Madonna was going to like mature to the fact of just being homely or just, you know, calming down or whatever as she get older with age. No, that bitch is still going to be doing the same thing. So I am not surprised. This is very much on par with Madonna and the stuff that she's been doing. Um, Moving on from that, Young Thug, he started up some little controversy or whatever on social media talking about basically if you broke, if you were broke, if you were man, you don't deserve to have kids and you shouldn't have kids if you're broke. Honestly, I feel I kind of agree with that. Kind of agree with that in the sense that it can go for anybody, man or woman. If you cannot afford these kids, why do you keep on having them? You should not have them, okay? And there are exceptions to the case because sometimes shit happens, but in the most part, if you literally willingly going out here getting people pregnant getting women pregnant or whatever and you know you can't afford them and you know you're not going to be in their life you shouldn't be out here doing that shit okay yeah i want kids i want kids but do you have the money to pay take care of do you have the time to take care of? are you going to be there in that child's life in all aspects and all realms you know that's a lot to consider um i know some people don't plan for kids and it just happens and that's understandable so i'm not judging that part but People that's literally out here just, just going out, literally fucking with no condom on purpose. Or oh, I got the pull-out game. I got the pull-out game. My pull-out game strong. No, the fuck it ain't, bitch. It's weak as shit, okay? Like, I don't know. It's just a lie. It's just a lie. But then again, I just don't like talking about... Well, he was talking about men. Because, I mean, I did put up in there women, too. Because we have some women that do the same thing, but... I don't like talking about women's bodies. I know I'm a woman as well, but I feel as though women should have the choice. And it is so crazy how we don't have the choice to do what we need to do or what we want to do with our own bodies. But yet, nobody is saying anything about men in their bodies. This whole situation about the Roe versus Wade um, possibly being overturned if it hasn't already or being considered the leaked memos and stuff like that coming out, that is fucked up that men have that much control over another human being. Like, bitch, are we back in slavery or some shit? And I hate to be so drastic about it, but that's basically what it's feeling like. Black people were slaves. We didn't have no fucking right over our own person, okay? We were fucking property. And now you're doing the same thing to women in general. Like, they can't control their reproductive organs on their own. It's their bodies. It's our bodies. I don't give a fuck if you don't agree with, you know, getting rid of kids or whatever. A, a, a fetus, a, a, a embryo, or whatever the fuck it is, okay? That thing that ain't even got a fucking... Any... It should be the woman's choice. And if you are not pro-choice, or if you're not pro-life, pro-choice, pro-life, or whatever the fuck it is that you are, that's fine, but you should not be trying to come at another person for what they believe and what they want. If you don't want it and you don't believe in it, then that's you, don't have it. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. Let people do what they need to do with their own body that they feel is best for them. We should not have all these goddamn rules and regulations over something reproductive shit. And then for women, anyway. Anyway, I'm not even finna get into that like that. Um, moving on from that, Brittany Garner, she's still up in jail in Russia. 
and now the government over here just now declaring that she was wrongfully detained. You think? It took this long for you to realize? Stop with the bullshit and just get her home. That's it. That's 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 all that's really to it. Um and uh congratulations to Candy and Ty Tucker. Uh <laughs> listen, motherfuckers can hate on them, but them motherfuckers will gonna find a, a way to get a job, okay? Business after business after business. Opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and Candy and Ty about to be uh executive producers. Uh, joining the producer team to the Broadway play that's coming up called The uh, Piano Lesson with uh, Samuel Jackson, John David Washington, which is Denzel Washington's son, and Danielle Brooks. Um, and they had helped out and produced on another Broadway play as well. So, you know, they out here getting it. Bitch, Candy said, I'm going to find a fucking check and a job. <laughs> and let me just say this. Um... The whole Dave Chappelle shit that happened. <laughs> okay, let me just be honest. I don't find Dave Chappelle funny. I never really found him funny. Like, I went back and I tried to watch the Dave Chappelle shows. And it had its moments. I have not, I don't know if I finished the whole thing, but it had its moments, okay? For the most part, I'm not going to say back then he wasn't funny or whatever because he had his moments with me, and I can, I can fully admit that. But this current day, Chappelle, I don't find him funny. Um, I don't get the hype. Um, and that's just not me hating or whatever. I find that way, I feel that way about a lot of comedians, to be honest, okay? Like... I would probably prefer seeing them in movies than actually hearing their stand-ups or whatever. Honestly, that's how I feel about all comedians, except for Monique, okay? Because Monique, her stand-up comedies have been hilarious. Thorough, through and through throughout the years, okay? Never failed to make me laugh. But I feel that way about a lot of comedians. I feel like some of them work better for me in movies than they do in their stand-up comedy. And I just feel uneasy when I watch a comedian trying to do their sets or whatever because I don't know if it's going to be funny or not. You know what I'm saying? So I just rather not. I don't watch most of these comedy specials that come on Netflix. Um, but especially when it comes to Dave Chappelle, I don't get the hype for the most part when it comes to like him being funny, funny. Not taking away from what he does and who he is, but no, he's problematic for me. Um, I don't agree with a lot of things that he said. Um, so I'm not surprised that somebody did what they did. Honestly, I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner. You know, people trying to say, oh, look what Will started. Look what Will started. These comedians getting attacked and all this shit. But people keep on saying, like, I don't know what the reason was. But at the end of the day, you're trying to say that, oh, it's just comedy. You should be able to take it. Who the fuck says that? But at the same time, bitch, control yourself and keep your ass seated. Now, what was the fucking reason for your ass to get up there and, and attack that man? Okay, try to bum rush that stage. Now, see, the difference is, you not fucking Will Smith. Chris Rock got on that stage and said, was that Will Smith? I said, now, Chris, what was all this energy at when you got your ass slapped on national TV? Okay? Baby, when his mama said, when Will slapped him, he slapped me. I said, bitch, no, he didn't. No, 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 no offense. I don't mean to call her no bitch. Y'all know that just, this figure of speech. I don't want to offend. I was like, girl, calm down. You know, old people. <laughs> they got to put 20 on 10. Because I could have came back and said, well, when your husband, when your son said what he said about that lady, that black woman, he said that shit disrespecting all black women. Well, we know that's not the case. But, you know, we just petty up in this bitch. I said, now, listen, when the real, no talk. I mean, real talk. When Chris Rock said that, I did laugh. I chuckled. I chuckled. He has every right. At this point, he has every right. But um, what really got me is the fact that when the guy came up there and did what he did, and them motherfuckers bummed the shit out of him, bitch. Jamie Foxx helped take him down. I said, Jamie fucking Foxx. Jamie Foxx do look like he used to whoop ass back in the day, so I'm not surprised. But um, listen, when Dave Chappelle said... Probably was a trans man. Y'all can say shit is comedy. Oh, we can't laugh about this. We can't this. That shit wasn't funny. Especially with all the controversy that was going around with what he said about 
the trans community and stuff like that. It just wasn't funny. Um, and at that point, I lost all fucking sympathy for him. No lie. Okay. But honestly, wasn't nothing going to happen to Dave Savelle. Baby, they fucked that boy up. He was only 23 years old. Isaiah, didn't your mama ever tell you to keep your ass in your seat? So you paid the fucking money. Who paid the ticket for your ass to get there? Or did you sneak up in that bitch? Because what? Honestly, what is the point? I don't get the point of going like, I can understand like, I don't get it. I don't fuck with somebody. I don't like them. I'm not finna put money into their pockets by going to their show. Just to come up there to, to fuck it up, bitch. Okay, unless somebody else paid for the ticket, that's one thing. But if you paid for the ticket to get there and to get your ass on the stage and try to attack that man, knowing damn well all the security and people that he got up there, especially because of the Will Smith shit, why can't we... Are we that dumb? Baby, now you out of here with a fucking dislocated, broken-ass arm. I don't think the arm is broken. That bitch, well, if it is, it's dislocated too. <laughs> Because that motherfucker was like this. I said, bitch, I ain't never seen an arm be like that on a stretcher. Like, they couldn't even put his ass back. I said, that bitch dislocated like a motherfucker, okay? Um, uh, was it worth it, baby? It wasn't. It wasn't. Because now you came out looking fucked up, okay? <laughs> he still was able to finish his show. And then um, you sat there throughout the whole fucking show and waited till the end to funny. <laughs> Y'all so damn dumb. So damn dumb. I just don't understand people. Keep your asses in the seat, and if you don't fuck with a person, well, take your ass home. Keep your ass home, okay? What was you trying to gain? What was you trying to gain? Being the laughing stock of the internet for the next week? Girl. Anyway, y'all tell me how y'all felt about this. Um, y'all got some more topics? Put it down in the comments. Let's talk. Uh, baby, they said the director for, um, Fast 10, Up and Left, Justin Lin, they said, bitch, he was tired of fucking Vin Diesel. Child. They said Vin Diesel is just hard and being difficult on set. Coming in late, not knowing his fucking lines, not in shape. And you want The Rock to come back to Fast, Fast 10? Bitch, please. Anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all week. And y'all be good. And I will see you guys later. Peace. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Girl. <laughs> a mess. I don't know what that was. Delete that. Delete that. Fast forward that.